Hi everybody, hope you're all right. Hope you're well keeping safe. Um, I, back in the last lockdown, back in November, I bought, uh, not this, I bought this. And I restored it and I got it working and it arrived broken. I knew it was broken. I just wanted something to play around with. Um, and I turned it from a broken Spectrum to a fully working and a uh, device which is great fun. I enjoyed it so much I documented it on my Instagram page um, but that's not this video. This video in fact is this one uh, which I bought just the other day and it arrived today and the purpose of this video and the purpose of this machine here is I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to see if it works to start with. There's a few things we're going to do to this uh, ZX Spectrum and uh, we're going to make it work and be an enjoyable plaything. If it all goes horribly, horribly wrong and we can't get it working, I've got another idea which I'm going to deal with this one and that is to mount a Raspberry Pi inside of it, build it up to be a games machine and it will emulate obviously a Spectrum but it will emulate everything else as well including Neo Geos and uh, some Dreamcast fun and you know, all sorts of goodness um, if this doesn't work. Anyway, let's get back to the point. This one here, as you can see, is in pretty good nick, actually. Uh, you consider this is back from 1983. There is some scuff marks down the side here, which is just battle damage, which is OK. Um, and generally speaking, it's all right. There is, as you can see there, I've picked it up perfectly. There is a dent just there. But other than that, it's all right. Now, on the other side here, we've got a, a rubber foot missing. It's an early serial number, but something quite interesting here. We've got some warranty labels over screw holes. And I've had a peek down inside here, and it looks to be, to my basic knowledge, it looks to be an issue two um, board, uh, which means it's quite an early device. And looking at the way that the sockets, some of the chips that I've had a look at in through the back here in this expansion slot, it looks as if it could have been upgraded from a 16K up to a 48K. But of course, we're going to know none of that until we open it up. So the first thing we're going to do is when we open up, we're going to disconnect the keyboard membrane. And this is the one thing that probably will be broken. And surprisingly, it looks intact. Let's just get it open. That looks incredibly intact. Okay, it's old, but it doesn't look to be any splits or breaks in that at all. And inside is really clean. Okay, we'll come back to that in a moment. And as suspected, it is indeed a issue to board. Um, quickly, I can understand that because this is down here as opposed to the uh, regulator being across the top here and run across the back. It's had the modification here and there's a modification up here as well. There's no other modifications here. So it doesn't look like it's been opened recently, but everything is super tidy inside. Super tidy. What we're gonna do, so we're going to run a multimeter over it and see if there is um, any problems at all. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go for a ground plane and we're going to go around the lower round chips because these are the ones which um, cock up. So what we need to do, in fact, is take this off and I need to modify, uh, I don't know if you see this, I need to modify this here so that this, at the moment this is an RF modulator and I'm going to muck about with it so it turns just into a composite video out because I don't have a monitor or a TV that has RF in anymore. God, that's so 1980s. Okay, so the mod is really simple. Um, as you can see here, we've got a composite video signal there and we've got power going here. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to make this RF um, modulator completely redundant and I'm just going to cut these cables, these wires here completely. Um, these two which I've separated here, I'm going to pull those out of the board in a minute. Inside there is a resistor which just goes onto the pin there. And what we'll do is we're going to put a piece of wire onto the center pin there, run it through here and wire it down onto this one here. So it's literally just going to go from here onto the center pin of there. And then we've got a composite video out. Dead easy. Let me crack on with that. So you can see there we've got uh, the cable going uh, to the bottom just here. In fact, let's tidy that up a bit. I don't want to be too precious about this one because like I said, I'm going to be undoing this one. But we've got the cable going from this point here all the way through the side of the modulator case and onto the center pin, which you should be able to see there. Now you can put a 10 microfarad capacitor across there. You can put a decoupling cap on there to smooth it out and change the signal and make it look a bit nicer. Yes, that can be done. I'm not going to worry because like I've said, we're going to remove this modulator altogether in a future mod, I hope, because it's something I've wanted to do. Um, I actually wanted to do it on my last one, um, but I never got around to it. Right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to fire it up. Um, so I've got a composite cable there going to the television and I've got my nine volt cable here as well. Now this is a special cable because weirdly the polarity is run the wrong way. Usually the outside pin is um, earth and the positive is on the inside. But as you'll see, if I just fire up the multimeter, it's the other way around. God knows why, but it is. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that that is the case and I have got the right adapter here in front of me. This is an aftermarket one, by the way. Um, so um, that way around, yeah, 9.28 volts. And you can see I've got it around the wrong way. Positive on the outside, negative on the inside. Right, good luck everybody. Let's see what happens. It's plugged in. and nothing is happening. He be dead. So let's put the TV back in, put this back in here and let's start prodding around and seeing what we get. Oh, maybe it is just a regulator that's gone pop because if that's got nine in there and 58 millivolts out there, well, that would be the first component to change, wouldn't it? So I'm thinking then, let's unplug that. Oh, that's interesting because I was, I was hedging my bets. It was going to be over here, but actually it could just be this little fellow down here. And it just so happens, um, if I can remember where I bloody well put them, it just so happens, I think, I think I might have some. I bet these are 7809s. Oh, glasses. What does that say? 7805. There we go. I've got a replacement. So I'm going to replace that voltage regulator and see if that changes anything. Well, that took some uh, that took some getting out, I can assure you. So that's replaced, that's back in. Let's just trim the wiring down on the bottom here and then we'll go again and we'll, we'll see what happens. Let's just have another look, make sure we're happy with that. Right, let's get the base. Put that back in place. I'll put the composite video in just in case. And I'll turn you around. Okay, here we go then, all set. Let's see what happens.
Oh, would you look at that? Stuff. Stuff is working. That's brilliant news. That's a major step forward. It's not great, but actually, you know what? That gives us a little bit of hope there. Because I'll tell you what that gives us. It means the CPU, the Z80, that's fired up as well because we've got a white border. This here and the flashing tells me that we've got a problem with the memory. Right, so as I leave it sat here, just soaking away, and I'm gonna monitor the temperature of these chips, and uh, we'll come to that in a minute while I'm doing that. But let's go through some of the things that we've done already. First of all, we've done a composite video mod over here. We've replaced the voltage regulator over here, and we've powered it up, and we're getting weird messages on the screen. So I think coming up, what we're going to do is we're going to fault find exactly where the problem is on this board. My suspicions are here, the lower RAM. So we might have a look to see if we re-socket all of these um, and see if we can identify a faulty chip there. I think what we're going to do as well, a proactive measurement, is we're going to recap the entire board. So we're going to change all of these capacitors over. Then we'll change the regulator over to a switch mode regulator. So that keeps it nice and cool. And we'll also look out at some ways of cooling down the ULA as well, because that does get very toasty. And then of course, on top of that, we need to make sure that the keyboard is working. And I suspect we'll need to change the membrane on that. And in fact, we'll do that anyway as proactive measurements. And then finally, we're gonna revisit our video output here. We're gonna take this out and we're gonna place this with an S video board. And I think that's all we're gonna do with this board. So, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching, guys, and um, well, join me on the next one. Thanks, bye.